Welcome to this video about global events in Blazor. Under a global event, I understand an event that every Razor component can subscribe to and also raise. So let's create a new folder. I call it events. In here, we are going to add our base type with the name of event base. It's just a normal class. Now itself, it will inherit from component base and we need to do this so that event base can be inherited from our, our Razor components, because of course they need to, some, somewhere in the hierarchy, they need to inherit component base. Now in here, I'm going to define two static events. First one type event handler with custom event orgs with the name warning event orgs. I call it warning triggered. Now from the naming, you see we are in the domain of warnings, which I think makes quite a bit sense when we speak about global events. A warning is maybe something that every component uh, yeah, should, should be informed about, or at least be able to inform, be informed about. Now, why are we using static? Because if we wouldn't mark them static, then the event would be only um, we would have one event per instance, and an instance, of course, is getting uh, created each time a Razor component is actually inheriting event base. But because we want to have them global, we have to have them static, so they are that they are not only available on one instance, but on the type event base, and therefore only uh, once in the whole uh, application. Now, just to refresh it a bit, an event is basically an encapsulation over a delegate which means that from outside of the type that is containing the event, we can own also, oh no, we can only subscribe and unsubscribe to the event. So if you want to invoke the event, we can only do it in this class. And, and so that the other members can actually invoke the event or raise the event, we have to uh, yeah, make a public method then that the other types then can call. Now here we use the Elvis operator to check if warning triggered is not equals null, then we invoke it. Here, first argument of type object. So we just pass it a reference to the to this object. And then here we instantiate new warning event args. And then on this type, we have a, a property name message. Then just, just initialize it here with message. Now the second method goes from the logic in the same direction. Here I just call it reset warning. We don't have any parameter. Now uh, the reset, what was it called? Okay, warning resetted. Here we didn't specify custom event orgs, so we just pass null in here as the event orgs, but uh, we don't use them afterwards. So now, I'm going to create a subfolder. I call it custom event orgs. And here we are going to define a new class, call it warning event orgs. And for this class to be used as event orgs, it has, it has to inherit from the base class event orgs. And we will just define two properties. First one type string name message, second one type date time, name date, and this property doesn't have to be settable. And whenever we create a new instance of a warning event orgs, we just initialize it with the, with the current time. So now, of course, somewhere we have to subscribe uh, to this event too. Okay, here I have to import a namespace. Okay, great, and just for clarification, an event handler is a delegate uh, that is a type of the event. So to, subs to make the event base available for all our components. Uh, we have to go here in the imports file. Now here we just say the, the yeah, we import the namespace and then we say we are using the inherits directive and say inherits event base. And what this does is every Razor component in the same namespace as the imports file is inheriting now event base. So from now on, in every Razor component, we can actually subscribe to this. So therefore, just go to the index component. Now in here,
mark the method as async so that we are returning actually a task. Now here we see it, warning triggered. Now we subscribe to it. We are getting here two arguments. First one type object, second one type warning event arcs. Now what are we going to do with this? Okay, uh, everything is a bit messed up. And because we assign it to here, we use the semicolon. So what are we going to use this? Um, okay, so we don't have the namespace imported yet. Here, I also have to import the namespace blazer events, and then here, custom event arts. Okay, so now here we are just going to initialize warning with the arguments that of course is also of type uh, warning event orgs and then we call status change so that the ui is getting refreshed now we also have another event that we are going to subscribe to with uh, this time with the name warning resetted again we are getting two arguments as it is always the case with uh, event handlers also yeah of course if we have the generic type specified and here we just say warning equals null, and then again, state has changed to refresh the UI. Now here, based on a little condition, we render a bit of markup. If warning not equals null, then we render an alert, use bootstrap, warning give it a little padding and then here we used two properties that we have on the warning event orgs first the date and then warning dot message now i just copy everything here to show to you that we can really use it from every component i just copied in the nav menu component and I also copy the markup. Now again, that's just uh, to show that we can use it in every component, no matter where in the, the hierarchy it is. So now we have two components that actually subscribe to this event. Somewhere we have to trigger it. And we can do this, for example, here in the counter. So whenever the current count is greater than 10, we just call the method trigger warning, use a little string interpolation, and here you are specify the message, counter is too high, pause in the current count. Okay, great. Now I also want to show you something special because I've in the introduction uh, told you that we can also use it from, not only from Razor components, but also from other types. So here, we are inheriting from event base. Here I'm going to create a, a private back, backing field. And here, instead of an auto-implemented property, I'm going to manually implement this property. Now here I'm using expression syntax to just return the temperature from the back, or just to return the backing field. And here I'm going to, again, make a little check. If the value is greater than 40 degrees, we are going to trigger the warning. Weather is too hot. And pass in here the value again, use string interpolation. Now, I know this maybe is a bit um, special. We have just one base type that everybody is inheriting. And of course, yeah, it's an architectural topic, so the 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 opinions uh, differ, of course. For me, it works quite well like that. OK, great. Now, I also want to give the user uh, the opportunity to actually reset the warning, of course, yeah, because we have also specified an in event. And we will do this here in the survey prompt. We won't change the UI. We just subscribe to the on-click event and just say reset warning. So. And OK, something I forgot. Here we are using the Blazor standalone application, so we don't have randomized weather forecasts. We just uh, read them from this file here. 
and to actually see the warning here i going to add um, 140 degrees which is yeah, substantially higher as the specified 40 degrees so just to sum it up i've created a base type call it event base that razor components can inherit because event base itself inherits from component base but also other types as the weather forecast can inherit these types then have two possibilities they can either subscribe to one of the two events okay here i just completely forgot to add counter to the index page of course it would also uh, work uh, if i had to navigate to counter but now we see it a bit better so now they inherit from event base have two possibilities either then they can subscribe to one of the two events or they can raise an event by calling a method and they have to do this because an event can only be uh, subscribed and unsubscribed to uh, yeah from outside of the type that is actually containing the event so now we reach 11 okay we see two warnings i click survey prompt they should go away great now when i navigate to fetch data we should see the warning immediately yeah because yeah one weather forecast has a substantial higher temperature as the allowed 40. here we see our little message and then yeah okay so of course that's an architectural video and the goal is not the end result but more the way uh, how we get there the great strength of this approach is that we don't have to care about the hierarchy of the components so if you are in a child component or if you are at the end of the component hierarchy we don't need to care we don't need to worry about event callbacks and this stuff we know every component can uh, subscribe to these events and can also raise the events the maybe controversial part uh, comes in here when you also have like types in the ui or in our yeah, blazers bow applications that then are going to trigger these warnings for me this works quite well i wouldn't put all, too much events and too much logic here in this event base but yeah, domains like the, the warning domain i think are quite um, made for such an approach because every component should have the possibility to subscribe to these events because they could affect the whole applications and yeah using this approach you don't need to worry about the hierarchy thank you very much for your attention